Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you top 50 English phrases that you can use in your everyday life. So if you are just about to embark on a journey to an English speaking country, you can totally use these phrases. If you have been learning English for a while and you wanna resume learning, this is the best video to start with. So let's go, 50 phrases in English in hopefully 10 minutes. Phrase number one, this is another way to ask, how are you? How's it going? How's it going? So you meet someone and you tell him, how is it going? Phrase number two, when you haven't seen somebody for a while, you tell him, long time, no see. So that means that you haven't seen this person, maybe weeks or months, long time, no see. Phrase number three, if you wanna ask him, what have you been doing, you ask, what have you been up to? So what was going on in your life? What have you been up to? Phrase number four, if everything is going well, you can just answer, can't complain. Everything is pretty cool. Can't complain. Next phrase, somebody tells you something and you haven't really mentioned it in the conversation, like they guess somehow that you have a new job and you ask him, how do you know? Where did you get the news? Like, how do you know? If somebody tells a cool joke, you can tell, that's a good one, that's a great joke. So the phrase is, that's a good one. If you want to thank somebody, you can say, it's very kind of you. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> it is very kind of you. If somebody was trying to help you but couldn't reach the result, you can say, thank you anyway. But it doesn't matter, but thank you anyway. Thank you for your effort. No, thank you anyway. And another phrase that I use in my emails, sometimes when I have an ask for a person, I ask and then I say in the end, uh, thank you in advance, which means that I really hope that you're gonna do it, so I'm thanking you in advance. Thank you in advance. If somebody made a mistake and he's really upset about it, you can just say, no worries. No worries. No worries, which means don't worry about it, it's fine. No worries. Imagine you came home and there are all of your friends sitting on your couch and you're like, what's going on in here? Like, what are you doing here? What is going on? If you didn't catch something or didn't understand the person, you can always ask, did I get you right? Um, and then go ahead and explain what you got. Did I get you right? If you ask somebody not to be upset, not to cry, you can say, don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart. Like seriously, don't be so upset. Don't take it to heart. Another way to ask if you didn't catch a part of a phrase, you can say, I didn't catch the last word. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Because I didn't catch the last word. If you want somebody to repeat the whole phrase again, you can say, sorry, I wasn't listening. Because maybe you were busy, maybe you were talking on the phone and somebody was talking to you and you're like, oh my God, sorry, I wasn't listening. Can you repeat it? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, another phrase that I use all the time, it doesn't matter. Like, don't worry, if you drop your coffee all over me, it's like, it doesn't matter, I'll be fine. I'm going to laundry anyway. It doesn't matter. If you want to wish somebody luck, and I always do that, you can say fingers crossed. And you cross the fingers like that. Fingers crossed. Another phrase that Americans use is, oh, that. That explains it. And the situation is you didn't get something and then you get an extra fact and you get it and you're like, oh, that, that explains it. Well, that explains it. Another way to tell a person to not be upset is you can say things happen. Like, it's okay, things happen, do not be upset. If you don't know the name of a person and you wanna to talk to him, you can say, sorry to bother you. You know, you see that somebody's busy, you can always say, sorry to bother you. And then you can go ahead and ask, sorry to bother you. Excuse me, sorry to bother you. If you are in the middle of something and somebody's asking you something, you can say, uh, I'll, 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 <laughs> if you're in the middle of something and somebody, somebody's asking you to do something, you say, uh, I'm sorry, I'll be with you in a minute. I'll be with you in a minute. And then you resume doing something and you say, where were we? Like, when did we stop? Where were we? And you have to repeat it because what is the sound that somebody, some people uh, mistake with B. So this is a great way to practice. Where were we? Again, if you're in the middle of a conversation and you didn't get what the other person was saying, you can say, you were saying, and with a question mark, uh, which means, which prompts the person to repeat once again. You were saying, if somebody got a job of his dreams or whatever, you can say, lucky you. Or somebody got into the university of their dreams, you're like, lucky you. This is a way of congratulating a person, lucky you. Or like, 
um, just emphasizing that he's lucky, lucky you. Another way to say that you're really angry is to say, I freaked out. Like, I was so angry, I freaked out. This is super angry. This is like almost crazy. I freaked out. I am freaking out! Another phrase that native speakers use is good for you, and this could be both positive and negative. When you say I got promoted, they say good for you, like congratulations. And uh, sometimes if you say like I'm leaving this place, they're like good for you. It will be better without you. And this is a negative meaning, so really listen to the intonation. If something surprises you, you can also say you gotta be kidding me. Like, oh my god, I cannot believe it. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. To tell somebody to smile and to be happy, you can always say cheer up, cheer up. If you want somebody to stop like crying and complaining about something that is not happening, you can say, come on, you can do it. Come on, Tor, you can do it. Like, come on, you can do it. You can pass the TOEFL. You can pass the GMAT. You will get it. Come on, you can do it. If somebody is doing really well, you can tell them, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Like, be as good as you are. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Continue being great. Another phrase is colloquial, and this is what Americans say, that's lit, which means that's amazing. Well lit! Many Americans say it in California, oh, that's lit. And you probably heard it in songs, that's lit. If somebody is successful after failures, you can say, there you go. I told you you're gonna make it. There you go. If somebody's asking you if you're tired and you want to say you're not tired at all, you can say not a bit. Uh-uh, I want to continue. I'm not tired, not a bit. When somebody is asking you, are you sure and you're pretty sure, you can say there is no room for doubt. There is no room for doubt. In America, if you want to SMS somebody or send them a message, you say, text to text so I'll text you means I will send you a message through whatsapp or telegram or messenger or whatever you're using I'll text you just text me or I'll text you again to cheer somebody up to tell them to not be upset you can say it's not worth it like why are you crying it's not worth it you're so much better than the problem you're crying about it's not worth your tears it's not worth it. I personally love the phrase you rock, which means you're amazing. Oh my god, you rock. No, you, you rock, no. You've done an amazing job, you rock. If somebody's not working really well and you want them to work harder, you can say you should go an extra mile, which means like work harder. You should go an extra mile. Another way to say the very same thing, you can say step up your game. Like, work harder, work better, step up your game. If somebody's crying and doesn't want to do things, you say, pull yourself together. Like, literally, <laughs> take yourself and pull yourself together. Stop working, uh, stop crying, pull yourself together. Hey, calm down, pull yourself together. Another phrase that I love, you sold me. Because sometimes people describe their trip or somebody they bought and they describe it as so well and they're like, I want to buy the same thing. and I tell them you sold it you sold me I want to buy this all right you sold me if you're not interested in the conversation you're like sitting you can say I could not care less this is so boring I'm not interested I couldn't care less if somebody's asking you something and this is a really easy decision for you like somebody tells you take my one million dollars and you say this is a no-brainer I'll take it this is a no-brainer means it's a really easy decision for you if you've done something wrong and you admit it you can say i screwed up yes guys i know i'm sorry i screwed up this is my mistake i screwed up i screwed it up if you want somebody to work instead of you you can say can you cover me like can you work instead of me while i'm i don't know seeing my friend can you cover me it's time to leave and guys i'd better be going which means i should go already it's you know it's actually 9 p.m right now I'd better be going. Another way to say goodbye, I can say take care, which means take care of yourself. I'll see you later. Take care. I don't know what day is it when you're watching this video, but if it's Friday, for example, weekend, you can say thank heavens it's Friday or thank heavens it's Saturday, weekend is coming, I'm so happy. This was it guys, 50 phrases in English. Let me know if this was helpful by liking this video and commenting below if you know any more cool phrases. 
that would be great. Uh, there is a red button over there somewhere. Um, subscribe to this channel. Do not miss my new videos. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this. Bye bye.